SDF. This stands for sine distance function, and instead of explaining it, let me just show you a few. So here you're kind of getting the sense of what's going on. You have different kind of primitives or shapes. Here I'm doing the two-dimensional case, and you can see that most of these have an interior and an exterior, and they're kind of flowing towards the shape. And without even knowing what this means, I think you can tell what a valid SDF looks like and a invalid. You can just kind of tell that one of these doesn't look right. Well, here is what a SDF is. It is a special function that tells you how far away from a shape you are at every single point. I'm gonna let that sink in because I don't think it's an obvious concept. If you have a shape, like let's say a circle, what you're trying to evaluate is on every point in the XY plane, or you could also do this three-dimensionally. What is the minimum distance I need to travel to get to the surface of that shape? And you can see in these animations here, basically this like circle around the pointer is representing the minimum radius or distance you'd need to travel to get there. We call it a sine distance function instead of just a distance function because when we're in the interior, the only thing we do is we just kind of swap the sign. We say, yes, distance is positive, but if it's inside the shape, we're going to call it a negative distance. So let's start off simple. Let's say you're looking for the SDF of a circle. Well, we know that if we have a point in space, the most direct way to to go towards the circle, like the minimum distance is kind of going towards the origin in this direction. And then the question is, what is the distance along that direction that we're going? And because it's a circle, it's actually super simple. We just take the magnitude of the vector leading to our point. So how far away is it from the origin? And then we subtract the radius of the circle, leaving only this kind of like distance fragment, meaning the SDF of a circle, and also it turns out a sphere, is just the magnitude of of the vector of the point minus the radius of the circle. One thing you might notice is if we are inside the circle, this kind of evaluates to a negative. Okay, so next example, let's try to find a function for the minimum distance of a line segment. And here you can see kind of what it should look like, but how did I even kind of derive this field? Well, if I have a point like this that is sitting directly above or below the line, it's obvious what the minimum distance is, right? We just travel perfectly perpendicularly to the line, meaning that the sine distance is literally just kind of the y component, how much vertically are we going up or down, and generally that works for almost every single point, except for these kind of like extremities on the left and right, because if I was just to use my like y value distance function, it doesn't actually go to the line. In fact, the shortest distance we can go is kind of going along this diagonal towards one of these endpoints, and this might look familiar, because this is the SDF for a circle, but the radius is zero. So at the endpoints, we literally just have the distance to the nearest endpoint. And you might think, okay, I've broken this down piecewise, which must mean that they're not compatible, right? I have this Y SDF, and then I also have this kind of endpoint circular one. Surely they don't match? Well, they totally do, as long as you say what section each one belongs to. Or even more simply, we just take our SDFs and we take the minimum because, of course, the shortest distance is going to be the smaller of the two SDF-like estimators that we have. Okay, let's do one more and then we'll move on to other things. Let's say that you have a square or even harder. Let's say you have a rectangle where you can vary the kind of like the width radius and the height radius. Well, kind of like the line, we have some areas where the answer is very obvious. So if I'm past the right wall of this rectangle, of course, the minimum distance is just kind of going left on the x-axis to get there. Similarly, if we're on the left wall, you just want to go a bit to the right. If we're on the top and bottom, you want to use the y component. So already we can break up our plane into sections of SDFs that we already know, and then we're just kind of left with these corners where it's kind of obvious that the nearest point that you can get to, the minimum distance is going towards the corner. But of course, we haven't really handled the interior where we have these negative values for the sine distance function? Well, in this case, we can just kind of take them and combine them this time using the maximum. The reason it's not minimum is that these are inverted. Kind of the smallest one in some sense is the one that's closest to zero, which is the maximum. And one thing you might have noticed that I just want to note is that a square is composed of four lines, meaning we could use our SDF from last time and just kind of apply it in four transformations and kind of take the minimum on the exterior and then the 
maximum on the interior. It turns out that you can take SDFs and combine them. So what you're looking at right now might kind of remind you of metaballs, where instead of just overlapping these things, there's kind of like a smooth connection. And in this case, I'm not combining these with a minimum, but instead I'm using a smooth minimum, which you can think of as basically just a modified minimum where at these kind of like intersections, we just do a bit of smoothing, which is what results in this uh, smoothing you're seeing on the 2D plane. So you can actually take any SDFs you have, kind of combine them or take the union is what we call it. But what about other operations? Let's say that we have two SDFs and I'm trying to get their intersection where they overlap. Well, in that case, all I do is kind of reverse the idea. I take the maximum and then for the difference where we kind of take one SDF and subtract another in some sense, all you have to do is again, take the maximum, but flip one of the SDFs. Now these operations, the intersection and the difference don't guarantee that you get like a globally valid SDF, but visually it will work for like pretty much all our purposes. So here I'm combining various SDFs, which you can see together. I mean, this is a, a simple case. They make a stick figure man. And this might've been obvious or maybe it wasn't obvious because we are making all these primitives, these shapes basically using mathematical formulas with these SDFs, we can zoom in infinitely close and there will never be any pixelation. And you don't need to store any like faces or edges or vertices. For example, imagine making a circle. You're gonna need a lot of vertices to get this thing looking smooth. So you end up with maybe like 200 vertices, whereas the SDF version literally just has this tiny equation. But there's other things we can do. We can literally translate the SDF. We can rotate it. You can take the coordinate system of this XY plane and just do kind of like a domain repetition. So you're kind of making it a tile. And then you just evaluate the SDF and with a single evaluation, now you've drawn a lot more. You also get radial domain repetition and you can also do distortions and stuff like that. And you know, finding all these formulas isn't necessarily easy, even if you're doing approximations. So I took all the primitives that I've made in addition to all the domain transformations and tools for this 2D SDF. And it is now available at b3d.tools. That is a uh, website, which will basically just lead you to Blender Market and Gumroad. Play with some SDFs on the cheap.